All right, I think we got some sound now. Can you all hear me? If you can hear me, give me a, a number one. Type in the number one if you can hear me. We should have some sound. Type in the number one if you can hear me. All right, that's better. Okay. Whew. All right, we got that worked out. Well, good morning, everybody. And I, that means I got to start the roll call all over again. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's time to declare your morning. This is the Declare Your Morning Show, the good morning show, and I'm your host, Benny Duncan. Thank you all so much for being with me once again for another episode of the Declare Your Morning Show. It's a beautiful day to be alive and well, and I'm super excited for what God has in store for us today. The heavens are open, opportunities are knocking, dreams are being realized, and God is still in control. So do me a favor. Get up out of that bed. Hold your head up high. Get that sleep out of your eye because it's time to declare your morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Please like and share the Declare Your Morning Show. And invite your friends and followers to be a part of uh, this morning's uh, broadcast. Amen. Uh, it's time for the roll call. So we're going to uh, say the roll call this morning. Miss Rosetta Martin is here. Miss Loretta Jones is here. Good morning. Sheila Dennis is here. Good morning. Nikki Finnegan is here. Good morning. Cheryl Dern is here. Good morning. Antoine Breedlove is here. Good morning. Uh, let's see, Vanita Towns is here, good morning, Latarsha Anuna is here, good morning, Sheila Dennis is here, good morning, Sharonda McMichael is here, good morning, Carolyn Taylor is here, good morning, good morning to all of you who have joined us, Michelle Johnson is here, good morning. All right, we are here. Now do me a favor, please like and share. My brother, Pastor Daniel Duncan is here. Good morning. Uh, who else is here? I saw somebody else. I saw my brother, Stacy Townsend is here. Anita Marcellers is here. Good morning. Sean Davis is here. Good morning. Deborah Hood is here. Good morning. Prince Gene Taylor Jr. is here. Good morning. My brother Rich Barnes is here. Good morning. All right. Thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, and thank you all for informing me <laughs> that the sound uh, was, was out. But we are here. And uh, how, how, how does my mic sound now? <laughs> my mic sound, does my mic sound nice? All right. I want to continue to uh, in, invite you to prayer and, and remind you that uh, we need to pray for those who are bereaved, the bereaved families, uh, pray for the homeless, pr pr pray for those who are hungry uh, this morning. Uh, and while you're praying, ask God, what is it that I can do, you can do to be a blessing to somebody in their time of need on today? Amen. We want to be a blessing uh, to somebody in their time of need on today. My son is here. Daniel is here. Good morning. Amen. Thank you all for being here once again. Continue to pray for those who are in authority that we might live a quiet and peaceful life. Uh, be, be aware, be vigilant, be sober in your prayers, and don't allow uh, the negative talk around you to influence how you pray. But you need to focus your prayers uh, into what God has already promised us. Focus your prayers on the power of and the authority that God has in our lives because he is still in control. Amen. He is still in control. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to say happy birthday to all the birthday babies throughout the month of October. Also, uh, those of you who are celebrating your anniversary, we want to say happy anniversary to you. If it's your birthday, if it's your anniversary, we want you to post it up so we can love on you. That's right. Post it up real quickly uh, so we can love on you. We also want to shout out all of our uh, teachers and students today uh, as you continue to uh, face the challenges of uh, walking through education, whether you're teaching or whether you're learning, uh, we want to pray for you and, and thank God for you today as you continue to move forward in uh, this particular endeavor. Amen. Good morning, Dexter Bats, Bats is here. My brother is here. Amen. Uh, also, uh, we want to uh, shout out Dynamic Mentoring dot org go and check it out though they are our sponsors dynamic mentoring dot org go and check it out uh you can find a lot of the content from it's time to declare your morning show all the way to uh the kingdom conversations and even some of the other discussions that we've had you can find there as well as a lot of uh, good material uh as far as it uh learning uh whether you want to get into Linux, Oracle, AWS, whatever the case may be, it's there. Uh, you want to sign your, your child up uh, for an after-school program. The, the rates are very reasonable. So go and check it out. Uh, and not only are you going to get uh, after aftercare for your child or even an extra skill that you may want to learn, but you're going to literally change your life going to literally change your life and so go over there and talk to my brother Tyrone Hall uh, who's doing a phenomenal job over there at Dynamic Mentoring and, and really being a blessing over there amen so dynamicmentoring.org go and check it out today good morning Jamika Johnson good morning all right, and I want to thank God for all of you our partners those of you who continue to uh, sow into our lives here at Declare Your Morning Show, as well as the Ministry of God's Purpose Ministries. And we thank God for all of you who continue to uh, sow and be a blessing to this ministry. We are expanding. You always hear me say that. And we're always expanding. We're always in, in increasing in what we're doing in, in terms of how we present uh, the good news. The good news uh, that somebody needs to hear that's going to help them through their day, encourage their life, and take them to another level. So I want to encourage all of you uh, to continue to give. You can give by way of Cash App uh, through God's God's pur Purpose uh, Ministries, uh, dollar sign God's Purpose rather, and dollar sign Pastor Benny or PayPal.me forward slash Benny Duncan if in fact you want to be a personal blessing to me. Make sure you separate the two. Amen. Amen. Make sure you separate the two. You want to be a blessing to the ministry. I want you to give directly. Uh, if you want to tithe, I want you to give directly uh, to God's purpose ministries. Amen. 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 Uh, also, uh, I want to uh, thank God for my son in the ministry, Pastor Way K. I want to thank God for him. God is blessing him. Uh, we are literally, right now, uh, we are planting a church, uh, several churches rather, in Liberia, West Africa. Liberia, West Africa. Uh, right now, uh, your, your gifts and your seeds are helping us to bless and be a blessing uh, to those who are there in the villages of West Africa there in Liberia. My son, Pastor Wake, um, and his wife are there in the villages being a blessing to so many. And I want you all to say a special prayer for him and his wife and his ministry there uh, as they are in revival this week. And as we have, uh, since we have uh, connected and 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 launch that ministry there god's purpose yes god's purpose ministries has gone international 
Uh, I mean, we've been an international ministry, but we have literally launched a church in Liberia, South Africa. And so now God is uh, placed his grace upon my life uh, to oversee uh, some other churches in other areas. So continue to pray for me and also continue to pray for Pastor Matthew Wake, his family and his ministry there especially because they are in revival this week and we are praying that miracles, signs, and wonders will be wrought in the lives of the people there and we're praying that God will expand uh, the, the kingdom in the earth as we do his will. Amen. So once again, thank you to all of our partners in ministry and those of you who continue to sow because you make it possible uh, for us to do what, we, what we're doing. Amen. God bless all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I see my, my friend uh, Malik Kambundu is here. Jamita, uh, Jamita Johnson Reed is here. Good morning. So thank you all for being here. I want to continue our discussion uh, on the principles of good decision making. So far, we've discussed uh, principle number one, which was identify the challenges that you face and define their purpose in your life. Identify the challenges that you face and uh, define their purpose in your life uh, to come up with an objective or, or a goal so that you can move forward. And we also said about that, be clear and concise about your objective. Be clear and concise about the goals and the objectives that you want to, uh, to achieve uh, in life. As God leads and guides you by his spirit, and he will if you acknowledge him in the process. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, point number two was do your due diligence in researching what it is you wish to pursue. Do your due diligence uh, in researching what it is you wish to pursue or whatever whatever it is you are uh, getting ready to decide upon, whether it be a contractual agreement or um, whatever it is, whatever you're about to uh, uh, embark upon, there needs to be research done before uh, you just make a, a decision. Don't just jump at it because of impulse, right? Don't just jump it. That's so easy to do. Because, and I'm gonna say this to you uh, while we're on this subject: um, th that things have been designed to capture you. There are certain things, many things. I'll say there are systems and things that were designed to capture you, to literally pull on your heartstrings in such a fashion that you will react upon impulse, right? You'll react upon impulse because um, uh, there are folks who sit around board tables and work out formulas that will cause you to just react upon impulse. And so if, in fact, you haven't done the proper research, first of all, on the the companies or organizations that that is that is causing you uh, to just react because they know what you like, right? It's just like catching a fish. You got to know what the fish likes, right? You can't just you can't just throw anything in the water, right? You got to know what fish like to eat, and so uh, there are there are people who sit around board tables uh, in, in board. Rooms, uh, they 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 put together formulas or algorithms, if you will, um, to cause you to react quickly, without thinking, without reasoning, right? Uh, even in a lot of cases of voting, um, the, the, these the, these uh, campaigns that are put together. Uh, and, and the words that are said, words that are spoken, the things that are placed in the media are there to, to create an impulse reaction. And if you haven't done your proper research, 
you may be reacting to something or you may sign up to something or agree with something that is, uh, first of all, not a part of your core values and beliefs, which is part of num point number three. Point number three was consider the many options that you have and narrow down your choices to the things that best support your core values and beliefs. That's point number three. Uh, for those of you who maybe weren't here, consider the many options that you have, right? And you have options, right? You have options. Don't let anybody put you in a bubble, right? This ain't the NBA. <laughs> this is real life. Don't let nobody put you in the bubble. Don't let anybody put you in chains, and 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 call and steer your mind to thinking one way. Look at all the options, whether they be negative, whether they be good, whether they be evil, whether they be uh, medium, high, whatever the levels are, because you've already done your own research. Do your own research. Don't let nobody think for you. Or don't let nobody push you or insinuate to you which way you need to move. But look at all your options. Yes, you have rights. Yes, you have, uh, 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 yes, you know, a lot of times we are entitled to do certain things, but not everything, um, as Paul says, all things are expedient, but not all things are profitable. You got to look at the profit behind it. How does this profit me? How does this add quality to my life? Before I go jumping into something, right? Before I go just uh, because the, the, this is more money than I've made all my, than all my life, I go and just jump into it. Well, is it going to best support my core values and beliefs? And I, am, am I going to spend more time doing that than supporting the very things that I've built up in my life as a core value and a belief? Or am I going to be going after that and being pulled away from the very things that God has blessed me with? God has blessed you with a family. God has blessed you with a spouse. God has blessed you with children. God has blessed you with connections well, are you going to be pulled away from your friends, your family, your connections, your children, so that you can go chase a dollar? The question is now, is it worth it? To me, it's not. It's not worth it. Okay? It's just not worth it. And many people already know and they've already decided in boardrooms that we can get you to do what we want you to do as long as we tag the right dollar amount to it. Some stuff is just not worth it, folks. If it does not support your core values and beliefs, if it doesn't add quality, if it's not profitable to you, you may want to consider doing something else. Okay? I've gotten to the place where I've got too old to, to, to be playing around with folks. Whatever decisions I'm going to make is going to be profitable to me. It's going to be profitable to me. Okay? It has to be profitable to me. And it has to be profitable to me because I'm considering those who are connected to me. I'm consider. Listen, <laughs> that's, not a, that's not even a word we use a lot anymore, right? Because we're so selfish. You know, we got... That's why we got selfies. We got we are we are in a society of selfishness. Well, we spend three fourths of our day taking selfies. I see I see people in their car just putting makeup. Women in their car just putting makeup, dressing their face up just so they can take a selfie. And they spend twenty five more minutes just just looking at themselves. Just. That's 25, 30 minutes wasted just looking at yourself. Not being pro because we have we we have been so we we've indulged ourselves in such a a uh like me attitude. 
that we have now disconnected from each other. Can you imagine that the recommendation all across the world for quote-unquote safety, let's just say in America, but mostly all across the world, they're telling you stay six feet apart. So let's just take America for instance. They're telling you take, stay six feet apart. I wish I had time to really tell y'all what all that really meant. But stay six feet apart. But keep the selfies going. Keep just keep keep the selfies rocking and rolling. Stay selfish, but don't don't connect with nobody. <laughs> All right. So that's going that seg segues me right into point number 4. Here it is. Point number 4 is this is have an accountability team of wise counselors to assist in your decision making. That's very dangerous then. If if in fact that is the key and that's the the, the thrust of of this whole safety thing with watch this, watch this. Let me let me show you what the Bible says. The Bible says, I gotta give you this. The word of the Lord says that in the multitude of counselors there is safety. That means when you have a group of people that are, that is like-minded, when I say like-minded, I'm saying they have God on their mind concerning you and concerning themselves. That in the multitude, the more people who come together, that's safety. But they're telling us that our safety is in separation. Oh, my God. They're telling us that our real safety is when we separate. And God is telling us is our real safety is going to come when we come together. So the question is now, who, whose report are you going to believe? <laughs> God is really saying, if you, listen, there is a protective principle to coming together and having wise counsel around me to help me make the decisions that I need to make. Now, let me help you with this. I want you to, I want you to um, type this in. Seek wise counsel. Seek wise counsel. I hope I'm teaching you good this morning. Te uh, seek wise counsel. Okay, so here, here, here it is. Here it is. It, uh, when you seek wise counsel, the first thing you need to do is seek the Lord. All right, the Bible says, uh, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding." So th that's what's wrong with being selfish. That's what's wrong with selfie this and selfie that and iPhone and. I this and I pad and I that. It's, it's something wrong with a society that perpetuates selfishness. There's something wrong with it. I don't, I don't know about you. I don't know how you feel about it. I'm just telling you how I feel about it. There's something wrong when we promote selfishness that is okay. Now, I'm not telling you not to love yourself. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is that when we're so self-indulged that we forget that God exists and that the folks around us who can help us to become all that God has called us to be, we forget about them. We forget about the children that God has given us. We forget about the family that God has given us. We forget about the connections, the organizations that God, the businesses, the blessing that God has given us, the things that he's connected to our lives to make our lives better because we want to be selfish. <laughs> I want you to do this for me today. Here's a challenge. I want you to, while you're on Facebook, I want you to find reasons to be a blessing and to encourage somebody else. 
Because it's easy. I mean, it's easy to get caught up in the game of, you know, I, I, I want to be light. I want to be famous. I want to be this and I want to be that. And that's wonderful if you, you know, if, if God has blessed you in that, in that way. But don't seek after something that it may not be yours. It may not even be something that you really want. Okay? It may not even be something that you can handle. So in seeking wise counsel, watch this. The first thing you need to do is seek God. Seek God. Because God will show you who your counselors should be. Okay? You need to have an accountability team of wise counselors to assist you, to come alongside you, to encourage you, to push you, to do all that God has called you to do. And to be all that God has called you to be. This should not be a, 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 a corner of people who want to control and manipulate you. We talked about those folks. We, we, we burned those witches out of your life yesterday. We rebuked the hand of the devourer for, for the sake of the people who, who have been so limited because you got the wrong connections. You need to learn how to budget people. Oh, my God. Somebody needs to type that in right there. Budget people. You need to learn how to budget people. See, Jesus was good at this. Jesus was good at budgeting people. Jesus, when he wanted to speak a word, he would talk to the multitude. When he wanted to perform miracles, he performed miracles for the multitude. Multitudes came to him and brought their sick and brought their lame and brought their blind and, br and brought their deaf and dumb. And he healed, the Bible says, all of them. That's the multitude. He wanted to have a, a hangout. He would hang out with the 12. If you wanted to commission somebody, he would commission 70. He commissioned 70 to go out. He hang, hung out, he discipled or disciplined 12. But his inner circle, when he really wanted to know what was going on, he would take his inner circle, that, only, that was only three people. Peter, James, and John. They were the only ones who knew who the real him was. He only revealed the real him to them three. Took them up on the mountain of transfiguration and showed them the glory before nobody else, before anybody else. He said, this, this is the real, this is how I really operate. It was them he showed Moses and Elijah to. You got to learn how to budget people. See, the, the, the problem with many of us is that we're revealing too much of ourselves to the wrong folk. You got to know who, who you can talk to. You got to know who you can confide in. See, the, th the three, the three that was his inner circle, they could rebuke Jesus. You remember Peter did it on, on a regular basis. I mean, he got... You know, he got he got checked uh, several times because of it, but he could rebuke Jesus. I mean, he was close enough that he could say, Jesus, that ain't going to happen to you. Right? Your, see, your closest inner circle of people should be able to rebuke you and tell you, brother, you're going the wrong way. Or even encourage you and say, you need to get up from there. It's time to move forward. You've been sitting on this thing long enough. You know God has placed something in you. They, see, your inner circle of people who are going to stir you up and tell you, come on, let's go. It's time to get this. You can do this. They're going to lift you up. They're going to tell you what's right, and they're going to tell you what's wrong. That's your accountability team of wise counsel. Twelve disciples, you had one of them that was, he was a hater. 
on the team the whole time. See, you can have you can have some one of your pupils or your the, the disciples. Somebody on that team is probably going to hate you, but you need them on the team because without them, you ain't going to go to the next level. But that's another subject for another day. But I'm talking about the accountability team of wise counsel needs to be a small group of people who understands who you are to the very core, the real you. I mean, you can tell them your stuff. And they're not going to judge you. They're not going to beat you down. They're not going to clobber you over the head. They're going to encourage you. They may even have to rebuke you, but they're going to rebuke you in love. They may even have to uh, reprove you, uh, give you some advice that, that may not feel so good, but it's going to be for your good. My God, not everything that feels good is for your good, but they, these accountability teams are going to be a people that God has led you to that you're going to pick specifically that are close enough to you to keep you accountable to doing what it is God has called you to do. This is good. Have accountability team of wise counsel to assist in your decisions. Make sure you seek God first. Don't put any team or any amount of persons before God. This was got, gotten a lot of us jacked up. We didn't put our mothers and our fathers in front of God. And, uh, you know, what they have to say has become paramount. What they have to say has become the azimuth. The, the zenith. The, the highest point of contact instead of God being the source of our strength that points out the resources that we need to use in order to be a blessing to many. God wants to bless us so that we can be a blessing to many. But we got to do this, making the right decision. And this starts with having good counsel around you. You need to have accountability. You need somebody that you can check in with that says, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what's getting ready to be the next move of my life. And because they know what God wants to do with you, and listen, if they're gonna sometimes they're gonna I've, listen. I got friends that will check me because they they know what God is doing in my life. And even if they even if they're wrong, they're gonna at least come to me. Just like Peter, sometimes Peter was wrong. They had good intentions, and what is what is, is really the point, right? Peter had good intentions. He was just wrong. Right? He was wrong in his approach. He just didn't know. He was not fully aware because God doesn't reveal all of himself at one time. Sometimes, you know, people can see the glory of your life, but they don't see the path that you must take. They, Jesus, I mean, Peter could see the glory on Jesus' life. He just didn't see the path he had to take to get to the glory. So when Jesus started talking about, look, I got to go to a cross and I got to be beat. I got to be taken from judgment hall to judgment hall. And Peter was like, nah, Slim, that ain't what I saw. I saw glory on you, man. I saw blessings on you. I saw God taking you to a whole nother level. I didn't see all this stuff you talking about going to some cross and all of us having to witness you being beat half to death. I didn't see that. That ain't the vision I saw. So they got good intentions. So you want somebody around you that has good intentions, that God has led to your life to help you make an informed decision with wise counsel, not a, not a selfish decision, not an impulsive decision, but one that is led 
by trusting in God and not leaning to our own understanding. Seek wise counsel. Father, we thank you uh, for this time that we've shared together this morning to declare and decree that you are great in our lives. And so, God, we thank you for these principles, these power principles of decision making. And as we make these decisions, we trust you to lead and guide us into all truth by your spirit. Today, we acknowledge you and your word gives us a promise that you will direct our paths. Thank you for the direction of our paths on the day. And that direction comes from your word. For your word is a light unto our path. It's a light unto our feet. And it's a, and it's a lamp and a light unto our path. And so God, today, God, we bless you today for leaning and depending on you for all of our direction. Because it's in you we live. It's in you we move. It's in you we have our being. Now today we pray, oh God, that you would place around us the counselors that we need to help us to make the right decisions. Those who will check us and tell us the truth about ourselves. And even when they're wrong, they have good intentions. They come to us in love. They come to us out of concern. And they come to us with your wisdom and your knowledge. They come to us open to your spirit. They support our core values and our beliefs today. And so, God, we thank you that the spirit of wisdom is upon us today. That we may not move by our impulses, but by your spirit as we make informed decisions today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Well, I got to go, but I want to let you know that you are victorious and God is on your side. Make sure you look everybody in the eyes and smile. Speak first to last. Show the love of Jesus Christ because he's been so good to you. Ain't no need of walking around with no frown. But turn that frown upside down. It's time to declare your morning. And I got to go. But I will not let you go until I give y'all some of this or uh some of this feel good music. Some good morning music. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's time to declare your morning. It's a beautiful day, so put a smile on your face. Yes, the day's gone away, and new day's a new day for you to smile. Tell everybody good morning. You'll feel so much better in the morning. So, get up out of that bed. Come on and hold your head up high. Get up out of that bed. And get that sleep out of your eye. Get up out of that bed. Well, until next time, I want you to experience what's new, what's now, and what's next. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Enjoy your day, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's time to be playing. Good morning. It's a beautiful day, so put a smile on your face. Rest the days go away, and new days a new day for you to smile. Tell everybody, good morning. You feel so much better in the morning. So get up out of that bed. Come on and hold your head up high. Get up out of the bed And get that sleep out of your eye Get up out of the bed It's time to declare